it might be possible that we're discounting the idea of people thinking about things in a very good way in unison, having an effect on everything that's around us. If a bunch of people are together and they all think a thing and they all like, we're so silly to think that that doesn't have some kind of an impact. When you look into the Bible and everything that's been written about the Bible, that's a hundred million times more has been written about that and it's just survived all these years. In the actual son of God, I would need a lot of evidence to right. believe that. <laughs> evidence demands a verdict would be a great We moment. got it. Yes, yes, yes. Evidence that demands a verdict. Come on. Is that why it's effective? It's well, like a natural thing that you could run. Well, yes. Then, well, here right? you go. I love this. It just sort of slides What is the software? Into... What is the code? It's the Bible. Mm. It is, it is the gospel, scripture. That is, if Yay! you want to look. Come on. Bruce Lawn. Okay, let's let's check out this Adam Curry clip. I think when they're scared, that's when they're more likely to be evil. I think it's more that. I think there's probably more evil being committed by scared people than there is by actual evil people. Um, I believe there's evil in the world. I and, think there's evil in the world as well. And if I believe there's evil in the world, then there's got to be good in the world. And uh, the beginning of last year, it was actually Naomi Klein uh, wrote a, a couple of Substacks, and she was you know you know Naomi Klein, she's mm -hmm. like Jewish lady, super leftist, mm -hmm. elitist, you know, hangs out with all the hedge fund people, has the dinners Upper East Side, and she saw people who she knew were not evil saying and doing evil things in hedge fund and money and stuff like that. And she said, oh, you know, there has to be good. And she went on kind of a spiritual journey. And I was very interested by this because I've looked at every conspiracy theory, you know, moon landing, 9-11, uh, JFK, mm. I mean, all kinds of conspiracies. But the one I'd never looked at, and now, you know, I'm 58, so I'm like, okay, let me look at this one, is um, God. And uh, I said, let me see about this God thing. I've never been a religious guy. Wow. He said God is a conspiracy theory, and I looked at this conspiracy theory? He said I looked at all the conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Moon landing, JFK, all of that. And the only one I didn't give the time of day was God. Guy, and uh, so I start reading and I start talking. I also found that around me, like a couple of people I was working with, they're all Christians, and not that anyone was ever pushing anything on me. When I asked them questions, they would gladly answer. And I, so I, there's a lot of stuff written about Jesus. <laughs> there's a lot written, you know, thousands of years of books, and, and mm -hmm. there's some contemporary stuff such as uh, evidence demands a verdict. And, you know, there's just it's so much. And I got to tell you, Joe, as sure as I know that Building 7 didn't fall down out of uh, sympathy for Building 1 and 2, God is real, Jesus existed, he was a badass outlaw, and it's changed my outlook on life. It has really yeah. changed the way I look at things. Pause it. He said, God is real, Jesus existed, and he was a bad cheeks, cheeks, bad <laughs> cheeks outlaw. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's good. Keep going. And I believe that we can win. Uh, <laughs> with the smoke going through his face. With um, the smoke. With God. I know it may, may sound a little weird uh, coming from me, but I am, I'm all in on this. And, you know, I'm not a, you know, like, you know, you may think of someone who believes in God or Jesus as a crazy right wing nut job, which I'm obviously not. But man, it's powerful stuff when you, when you put uh, prayer into your life. It's really powerful. The Holy Spirit. I don't think there's anything weird about it at all. Pause I mean, it. Yo, God just keeps sending Rogan Christian after Christian after Christian after Christian. He's like, Christian gosh, this one came in disguise this time. I was just trying to talk about MTV. And <laughs> That's so good, man. Wow. That's so good. Now, I want to I hear his response here. I mean, I think it's, there's a reason why it exists, why it's so prevalent in so many cultures. It, it helps people. It's about love. Yeah. It's and all about love. Yeah. Whether or not uh, the idea, the problem is the word. That word has God? been co-opted. Yeah. The, the word has been co-opted in a lot of people's minds. There's not a real problem with the word. The, the, I should rephrase that. There's a problem with the perception of the word. Sure. The perception of the word is that you believe in fairy tales and you believe stories. in old yeah. mythical stories yeah, sure. by the book and, and you believe that gay people shouldn't be allowed to get married and you believe, you know, there's like all sorts that's of stuff not, that comes yeah. with that. That's right? not really contemporary. All things that Joe has personally said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all <laughs> things Joe, Joe has said himself <laughs> yeah. about this exact topic. Wow. I mean, uh, right. Yeah, I understand. But that, isn't that fascinating? No, contemporary yeah. religion is sure, a fascinating sure, concept. Of course. Because of then course. you have to agree that the hand of man has decided and culture has decided to manipulate these ancient doctrines and change them to keep up with the times. Or evil. Pause or it. Evil. Pause it. Constantine. <laughs> it's like the Constantine did it, man. He, he corrupted it, you know? Yeah. No, but. Nope. Keep going. Uh, is 1.5 too fast? Or is I, th this I think it's fine. Okay, cool. Or evil. Yeah. Or evil. It's kind of like, mm. but I think what, what I was going to say is like the concept of like a guy in the sky, uh, you know, with a robe on, like what people consider God, that mm -hmm. seem, might seem ridiculous, but the idea that there's a powerful force of the universe, like why wouldn't there be? Like how else did this happen? Even if that powerful force is just some scientific creation machine that's impossible for you to wrap your head around. Close. But a I mean, I mean, this is this is we're literally seeing him. It sounds like he's going from like agnostic to theist mm -hmm. in real time. This is like going from deist to theist. 
Wow. And that's what I'm gathering. I mean, you guys can push back if you disagree. Around the amount of power that it has. It's literally created the universes, the multiverses, the, the, the different planets and the different beings and all the inventions. It's created everything. It's constantly in this creative process. Like just knowing that that's a real thing mm -hmm. can give you order in your life. I think the problem that a lot of people have is they think they're smarter than they really are. So they think that like saying they believe in God like makes them seem stupid, mm. you know, and they're, they're worried about criticism. Yeah, so they won't, they won't say it. So they won't. Wow. Huh. He said people think they're smarter than they really are. They think they're smarter than they really are. So they think saying that they believe in God will make them look stupid. Uh -huh. So that's why they don't say it. That's the, it's the opposite. I think being honest about that makes doesn't make you stupid. It makes you honest. And usually your honesty is going to be more well-received in that specific circle. But I think the opposite is true. Like I think it's irrational to not believe in God. Do you feel like this is subliminal shots at Neil deGrasse Tyson? Because he was—he won't say he's theist. Mm. No, I—I I, I, uh, that's interesting. Maybe, 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 maybe they had offline conversations. So they well, it's interesting because um, you look at the concept of the simulation or the matrix, right. and uh, and that's certainly believable as a, as an idea. Red pill, blue pill, you know. And, sure. and so you could also say evil or good. Um, I just know that there's a lot more. I'm a, I'm, I'm a conspiracy therapist, so I look at stuff. I read stuff. Conspiracy therapist. Come Conspiracy on. Conspiracy therapist. I've never heard of that. I read stuff. <laughs> right. And there's a lot more documentation of Jesus walking the earth and, and God and the Holy Spirit than there is about the simulation. There's just a lot more believable wow. information out there that has been you know, studied by scholars for thousands of years. What do you think uh, Jesus' role was? What do you, who do you think he was? Well, well, he was literally the son of God and he was on the earth to teach and he, he wandered. I mean, he was an outlaw. He did some crazy shit, you know, overturned the tax tables and you know, he really railed well, why against do a lot you, of stuff. Why do you think? What, based on what information that you have, why do you think that he existed? Let's go. Uh, well, to, well the, the, Jesus had to die after teaching us how to live a good life and how to be a good person, which is all about love. And that was to absolve us of our sins, which is kind of a cool out. You know, so everyone's a sinner. Everyone's fucked up. Everyone's flawed. But you are forgiven for that as long as you try to be better. I mean, that's literally every book in the Bible is about, like I was reading this morning. Um, I forget what it was, but it's like Jesus said, be quick to listen, slow to answer, and slow to get angry. And I took that here because I remember last time I was here, um, which was over a year ago, and a lot of people said, dude, you're a fucking asshole. You keep interrupting Joe. And I did. And you even said, oh, calm down, Adam, calm down. You're excited to talk. But yeah, but that's just normal excitedness. It's not, you're not being an asshole. But it's better if I listen. It makes everything better. If you, so it's just small things like that. But ultimately, mm. it's 100% about love and, um, and knowing that it can, it, it can be beaten. This evil in the world can be fought against. In fact, it's probably already done. Um, and I'm just new to this, Joe, so I can't answer everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love studying. I love reading. I'm just, it's fascinating material. And but he said, there is way more evidence for Jesus than there is the matrix. Wow. Then there is a simulation. That's a good, that's, that's a good point. That's a bar. That, that, that is true though, right? Like, yeah, cause yeah. everyone <laughs> has this like simulation, like it's real trendy now. Elon Musk, everybody's talking about it, but. But Jesus is a myth. But Jesus is a myth, fam? Come on, Come get on. out of here, son. Come on, yeah, hide your kids, hide your wife, <laughs> Hide your kids, guys. hide your kids, hide your wife. Explicit, wife. Explicit. Be explicit, explicit. Material. And it there's is so material. much there. It's really I mean, fascinating. It's a guidebook for life, right? Yeah. It's, that's what mm -hmm. it is in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But why do you believe that someone really was the son of God? I mean, if you're talking about Here we go. information that's been, it was written, I mean, how, how when they wrote the New Testament, how long had he been dead when they, they wrote that? Pause when it. They put that so the correct answer is that the apostles that did write the New Testament, specifically John, they say that Peter may have had a hand in writing Mark because mm -hmm. um, Mark wasn't an apostle. And Matthew uh, were written towards the end of their lives, mm -hmm. right? And the Gospel of, of John, I think, was the was the last one. Yeah, and I think Luke was written a little earlier. So, so Rogan is right in that those were written decades later. What he's not what he's not gathering is that there were other books and epistles written way earlier, like within a decade. Yeah, because this thing was exploding organically, churches were growing, and what you see the majority of the New Testament outside of the Gospel accounts and, and Revelation is churches asking the apostles questions and the apostles writing back answers. Mm -hmm. That's what the majority, because the church was exploding. So um, he's asking great questions, and so uh, he, this gentleman who's doing an amazing job also sounds like He's a newer believer. And he says that. He says, he I, said I, that. I, don't have every, I don't know everything. Yeah. I'm just a new believer. And I mean, and another thing about the whole decades, mm -hmm. right, is that there are um, books and documents written about uh, early philosophers and Stoics mm -hmm. that were written hundreds of years after that person lived mm -hmm. that we historically deem as accurate. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the Bible, and it's only 
and it's decades, 50, 40 years. We're tripping? Yeah. Yeah. But we're yeah. going to say the Stoics and the philosophers where their books were in 100 <clears throat> years after their life are actually historically accurate. Like, and there's less manuscripts for those. Yeah, exactly. And there's less manuscripts. There's less eyewitness statements. There's mm-hmm. a lot less everything. Yes. So even the decades is like spot on. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's early. That, that's, that is early. <laughs> that is early. Keep yeah. Going. Put that well, a lot of, well, the testament is literally people who witnessed him and wrote about him um, right. at the time or uh, at the time. And they did, they decided. It was a little later. It, it was later. It wasn't. To put it in what not to based on like Constantine had well, to say in it, right? No. Nope. Uh, again, I'm new testament. to this, but there's. Pause there's... It. Constantine is 300 years later, bud. Yeah. There, Joe, come on, man. Joe, please. It don't got to be me, bro. It doesn't, Rogan, it does not have to be Ruslan. Inspiring philosophy, ah, uh, John McRae. Mm-hmm. There's so many great people that can come on and articulate this and really give you the timeline. Uh, it doesn't even got to be someone well-known. I think Arthur from Apologia Center can go on and give him yeah. a great, robust breakdown of when the gospel was written. What did Constantine have to do with it? Like, What did Constantine have to do? He's, he referenced this on the Mike Tyson podcast as well. Con- Constantine was the emperor of Rome yep. that two different accounts of he potentially had a bedside uh, con- confessional mm. or on war had an image of Jesus and got, and got saved. Mm-hmm. And Constantine is the reason why Christianity became legal in the Roman Empire yep. and then eventually kind of combined Christianity as the official Roman religion. Okay, but they're confusing Constantine with the Council of Nicaea. They're confusing Con- Constantine with the Council of Nicaea. Okay, and he he did help organize that, from my understanding. Yeah, yeah. but and they're, cons- they're they're confusing Constantine with having anything to do with the canon. Constantine mm. had nothing to do with the canon, um, meaning the, how we got our scriptures. Yeah, um, he had nothing to do with the Trinity. He had nothing to do with the things that they clarified. So this is hundreds of years later. The Bibles were written in the first, uh, you know. You're talking about, I think, the Gospel of John's written 90 A.D. I want to say the other one's like 60 to 70 A.D. Mm-hmm. Constantine's on the scene at like, I want to say 350 wow. yeah, A.D. Yeah, yeah. You're literally talking about 250 years later, you know? And so it's it's such a big jump, but this is one of those things that people spewed out against uh, Christianity, and they don't really know what they're— they don't really know what they're saying because they've never really sat and looked at just a, just a basic timeline of things. Yeah. You know, go ahead. There's so many amazing things about the books in the Bible. There's code, um, you know, certain yeah. certain scripture has exactly this amount of letters, but none, no uh, consonants or uh, vowels are duplicated. There's all He's kinds getting of into like crazy Bible stuff. code stuff and uh, some other stuff. So Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Crazy stuff that just seems like it's impossible to phony that up. Um, but um, your question is, why do I believe that? Why question. do you believe he's the son of God? Not why do you... Okay. Because, you know, I mean, obviously, there's so much that's a part of... Uh, Whenever you have a religion, when you have an oral tradition of this religion where people are just talking these these stories to each other mm-hmm. before it's ever written down, which they think was like a thousand years when you're mm-hmm. talking about the Old Testament, right? Mm-hmm. And then it was written down and it was written in ancient Hebrew and then it was mm-hmm. translated. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Why, but the a person being so, actual- So, pause it. it. It wasn't written thousands of years after it happened. Mm-hmm. You may be able to argue that Moses wrote the Genesis account. Yeah. But that's about it. Yep. You know what I mean? That's that's about it. It's not stuff that isn't written thousands of years after- it supposedly happened. Totally. You know, but I think he I think he's gonna make a good point here. Being the actual son of God, I would need a lot of evidence to right. believe that. <laughs> evidence demands a verdict would be a great We book got book. it. Yes, yes, yes. Evidence that demands a verdict. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. But just as I know that JFK was assassinated and I really believe the CIA was involved, um, because it's been written. I've I've just mm-hmm. read documents and documents. So when you look into the Bible and everything that's been written about the Bible, that's a hundred million times more has been written about that and it's just survived all these years. So I'm right, just, but I'm just if someone, someone writes about the shining yeah. and a bunch of people review the writing of the shining and mm-hmm. write about the shining, it doesn't mean that the shining actually happened. You know, just because so many people are writing about this particular religion doesn't mean that there was a person. But they haven't written it about it. doesn't mean the sh- they weren't. I'm not saying they mm-hmm. weren't. I'm not saying I know. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying it doesn't mean that that, was, that no. man was the son of I'm God. I'm just telling you, my process is when I investigate things, and it, to me it was a conspiracy theory. Like, I'm just going to start reading. And it, I read for three weeks until I gave up and said, I can keep reading, but all the evidence just is thrown at me over and over and over again. If I'm going to believe mm-hmm. certain things about JFK or 9-11 or uh, whatever, which I've read as much as I can, but there's not that much. It's just, it, it, to my own my own conscience, I have to, if I'm going to believe that after reading, you know, 50 years of documentation versus that, thousands of years of documentation. But it's thousands of years of documentation of a story. See, the, the, the problem is anybody, multiple can, stories. like people have said, multiple people have said today mm-hmm. that they are the son of God. In fact, there's this guy, this Australian Jesus guy, I don't know if you know who he is. No. He says he's uh, Jesus reincarnated and he's got this lady that he, he's with and he says that she's Mary reincarnated. I don't know if they're still in, act, in active, like, I don't know whether mm-hmm. they're, they're still rocking this little thing that they're doing. <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, this guy was running around claiming that he was Jesus. The, the problem is, if he was really good at it and really successful in a time when people... Wow. Carter said, 
Fam, I'll never forget the Pledge of Allegiance. Why? We said it every single morning mm. in school as a child. They write off oral tradition like it was whimsical. Yeah, because because I think Joe's missing that other tra traditions of the other cultures have oral tradition versus written tradition. Yeah, we consume information so flippantly and just forget it. That's not how exactly other cultures worked. Yeah, yeah. Time when people were not very sophisticated, mm -hmm. he, he could probably pull it off. And then when he dies, everybody would say he was the son of God, sure. and we don't know. No. So how would you know that this guy who lived two thousand plus years ago? That's why. Is actually, the that's son of why God? I call myself a believer. Because you just believe. Yeah. I've, well, yeah. And I've, and, I, and I've seen what it has done for my own life. What does it do for your own life when you believe? Uh, it makes me a very happy person. Um, uh, prayer does work. Not if you're asking for stuff for yourself. Uh, but I, I've experienced, it's not really just the miracles that I've experienced, but it, it really, it, it makes me happy. Good things have been happening. Uh, so you just find it effective. It works for you. Of course. And yeah. so you're, you're just saying. I think mm. that the, the, this is great. The, yeah. the flip side of this is that's not how it works in North Korea, in China. Yeah. Being a Christian in other parts of the world, Pakistan, it could cost you everything. So it's not just going to make you feel good and like you get all the cool answers to prayers. Yeah. And and he was he was mentioning evidence that demands a verdict. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I mean, he's uh, he, newer. I think so he referenced a uh, case for Christ. No, he did. He did. He mentioned evidence yes. that demands a verdict. Okay, I missed it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So he read the book. He read the good stuff. This is how I came to faith. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like, but I don't think he just, he can't recite it. So, and then Joe's a lot of pressure. Mm. But I thought we were about to get somewhere really crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, if he starts laying out evidence. Yeah. <sighs> Let's see. This has helped your life. Uh, it's it, interesting it, because people will resist this, right? This of course is they will. Which is why I'm bringing yeah. it up with you because I, I love that you can discuss this with me just as two dudes discussing this. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm not an anti-religious person. No. I, I certainly was when I was younger. When I was younger, I had me a, too. A, an ignorant version of religion, mm -hmm. what it meant to people. But now I think of it more of like a moral um, scaffolding and a, a guideline for life that I think there's a reason why it exists. I think it's very beneficial for people. Mm -hmm. I think when people get involved, and I didn't think this when I was young, but I was very smug and I thought of um, people that were religious as being duped. Right? You got duped, right? You believe in some mm. stupid it was written by people who uh, were writing on cave walls, you know, so that, that, but the reality <laughs> is like, I know a lot of people that are Christians, they're really nice people. I know sure. a lot of people that are Muslims that are really sure. nice people. Sure. And I think part of one of the reasons why they're so put together is because of their religious belief. I had this guy, Bilal Muhammad on the other day, he's a UFC top 10 welterweight, mm -hmm. amazing guy. He won't even say, he says, what the fudge? He was saying, what the fudge? The man <laughs> is a cage fighter. Mm -hmm. He's not just a cage fighter. He's elite. Yeah. He's in the top 10 of the welterweight division was arguably mm -hmm. the most talent rich division in, in the entire sport or one of them, one of two or three. And this I won't even say. Is this so, Joe so, so, changing this conversation religion. here? I know, I know. He let's always what, does it. Let's see what let's the see. response is. And talk about sports. So something yeah. happened. Damar Hamlin. Damar Hamlin uh, got a hit. You know, he's a the oh, Buffalo. Oh, interesting. He's gonna bring it back to prayer right now. Bills. I think yes. He, he got a hit. He goes out. He's down. Cardiac arrest. Yeah. What? This is the, the number one TV slot of the week. Monday Night Football. What did we see? We saw huge men of all colors, all backgrounds, and women, and anyone from the sidelines in a prayer circle. Wow. And they prayed for him. And Damar Hamlin said. That day before the game, he said, I think God is going to be working with me in a different way today. Wow. Why he said that, I don't know, but it's historical. He wrote that, he said that before the game. Did he say that publicly? Like, yes, on Facebook yeah, or something? Yeah, there's articles, there's uh, reporting on it. Wow. And then, the, the, now, no one said, Look at those crazy Christian in their prayer circle. That's not going to help. <laughs> of course, the guy lives. The Buffalo Bills quarterback says, What happened there has made me, a, a, I think, a better follower of Christ. Wow. These are not coincidences. I mean, wow. you just look at that and say, Holy mackerel, that is really interesting. Well, skeptics and cynics would immediately dismiss of the course, idea that a collective group of like-minded people who only have love on their mind yes. can't impact <laughs> the, the zeitgeist, impact space. Hmm. It's good. That's so interesting. He's basically saying prayer works. Yeah. He's but, basically saying people who have the collective mindset, right, he's, he's going to bring but, it to like a natural, naturalistic point of view. Right. Because the presupposition that I believe Rogan is moving away from is this... Is this uh, exclusively naturalist, materialistic presupposition. Yeah. That the supernatural can't happen. Once he can detangle that, then he could be open to the reality of miracles. Mm -hmm. And if miracles are possible, then Jesus rose. You know, because that, that I mean, that's one of the most well-documented miracles that thousands of years later, people are still testifying to what happens uh, because of that miracle. You know, how different society is because of that miracle. So, uh, play the rest of this. Space. The space around them. What are you showing mm -hmm. me? The article. Going on? After, that was it says game day. Year. Nothing I want more than to be running out that tunnel with my brothers. God using me in a different way today. Tell someone you love them today. It already happened. Wow. What? Oh, it already happened. That's spooky. Mm -hmm. oh, this is, I, it already happened. What? The Demar Hamlin accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it already happened that so day. So it wasn't like beforehand. Oh, okay. Well, so it's, I, think, I think it happened before. I mean, there's, there's, I've seen a news article. Mm -hmm. But okay, maybe not. I, I don't know for sure. I okay, was not able. See, he wrote that afterwards. See, it says, although Hamlin was not able to return to the stadium for his team's game on Sunday, he tweeted that God is using him in a different way. So it seems like it was after. That's possible event. that I got that wrong. Well, either way, it's like, 
the, the, the people that got together and they, they cool prayed story. for him. I'm not saying that re replaces medical science. No, of course not. Medical science saved him. But I am saying that it might be possible that we're discounting the idea of people thinking about things in a very good way in unison, having an effect on everything that's around us. Like, there's a weird thing that yes. we, we assume that human communication is just words. I'm saying sounds, and you're listening, mm -hmm. and you interpret it. But there's also like an energy that's Absolutely. going between people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's good energy and there's bad energy. There's mm -hmm. people that are creeps and there's mm -hmm. people that are fun. Yeah. And you don't know until you're Pause around it. them sometimes. But uh, Rogan, you're using that word energy wrong. Mm -hmm. Energy is the capacity to do work. <laughs> it does not mean which that doesn't that word does not mean what you think it means. He's using it like vibes. Yeah, he's using it like vibes, like good good conversation. You know, <laughs> synergy, like human ah, synergy, synergy is probably, probably a better, better way to describe it, but not energy. That, that's not what that word means. Mm. Go ahead. If a bunch of people are together and they all think a thing and they all like, we're so silly to think that that doesn't have some kind of an impact. It this is him explaining away prayer mm -hmm. on a naturalistic, supernatural level. Yeah, it don't work that way. Might not have an impact, but it might. It might be something that you can't put on a scale. It might be something that affects things in a mm -hmm. different way. You know, like yeah. cities have a vibe, sure. right? If you land in an, an impoverished inner city, you're driving like there's a vibe, and it's not fun. Mm -hmm. It's not a fun. Vibe. It, I mean, you just said that, like that's what he means. He means vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, means right? vibe. he means he means more like ethos and and human synergy. Yeah, and, and zeitgeist. Like whether something is inspiring or not. Yes. Like there's places, there's yes. conversations that are not inspiring to be. Yes. In. When we were in Israel, we were in Jerusalem, and we were leaving. We were in Israel. We were leaving. Oh, where were we? We were right outside of. Gosh, I'm drawing a blank. What is the city called? Jerusalem. No, no, no. Israel. It wasn't Jerusalem. Tel Aviv. Oh. And we were walking through, and we were about to get on our bus, and we walked through this super cool coffee shop. And you just walk in, and the vibe was incredible. It was yeah. so cool. And it's this little small hole in the wall. The guy's playing vinyl records. It's a crazy <laughs> mix. It, it was like the coolest spot ever. And on his sign, he had a sign, and it said, um, I feel like the world wants me to pray for it, but no one's effing praying for me. And so we ended up stopping and praying for the dude. We ended up talking and asked if I could wow. pray for him. And it, he was a super cool dude, and he, he got emotional when we were praying. You know, he was like, wow. I, I, I didn't get emotional, but he literally, like, spooked out. Like, he was like, wow. You know, <laughs> and cool. so it was me, Pastor Mike Signorelli, Jeff Moores, and Sean Cannell. And... So I think that's what Rogan is saying. Like there are definitely environments that you can be in that just have a different aura to them, mm. but it's not this like mystical new age aura. It's it's, yeah. it's 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 just a it's the zeitgeist of the place you're in. There's a good feeling of colors. Yes. The person is generally good a, aesthetic, a good, positive yeah, person. Good music. Good yep. music. Yeah. Yep. It's a weird vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, there's places that have a vibe, and I, you've got to wonder how much of that is just how the people that are in that area feel about things. And that it puts it out there. Of course, yeah. How much of it? Well, I mean, if people get together, so call it what you want. I mean, I think I always said I'm spiritual. I believe in energy, mm. etc. So I've just put a different name on that, which I truly believe in. Um, so what is that energy? Right. That, that has not been scientifically really shown, or it hasn't been really given a name. Um, but when people come together in church and pray, or on the field and pray, or a it, can be, it, can, it can be very beneficial. Yeah, yeah. Rogan, and, Rogan's like, oh, a comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> He's always trying to bring it back to vibes. <laughs> comedy show, all right. I think that's what's and happening the hand in of comedy God, shows. And the hand of God works. You know, It's not like God says, oh, make him live. No, hey, medical science people, let's help him. I got yeah. some prayers here, let's do this. I mean, that you can argue either way. Well, I mean, you could argue that atheists saved him too. I mean, I don't of know course, what the religious beliefs of the people and that's fine, him. and that's fine. But my, my point is, it's like, I, I really do think there's some stuff that's going on that we're not measuring, that you can't measure. Hmm. There's there's I agree. stuff that's going on with mm -hmm. human, it just might. And it, it might be that you can sort of guide life in a, in a direction that's outside of logic, outside, I mean, that you might be able to guide life in a direction with positive energy, but only so much so. Like, you mm. know, the people that are like into the secret, remember, oh, like, yeah, oh yeah, you, secret, you make yeah. your own destiny. I yeah, go, yeah. I go yeah. babies get killed in drive-bys. <laughs> babies get yeah. killed in drive-bys. Mm -hmm. You can't say that. You can't say you everything that happened to you is because of your thoughts. That's ridiculous. No. Come on. That's the Rogan I need. That's the Rogan I need. I need the Rogan to rail against the secret. Because he just he was kind of going that direction. It's definitely felt that way. And then he just completely did a U80. Yeah, yeah. So for context, he's speaking to a gentleman named Adam. What's his last name? Uh... His name is Adam Curry. Adam Curry. And Adam Curry is a new convert to Christianity, came in through the door of conspiracy theory land. Yeah. Which is fascinating. Those people are great. Yeah. And uh, and so he is attempting to share his faith with Rogan. You know, the idea that it is, like, well, what about super volcanoes? Did you will that to happen? Like, come on. What about asteroid impacts? What about <laughs> you know, acts of God, hurricanes, <laughs> tornadoes, and whole explicit, villages torn apart by tornadoes? Explicit. Explicit. 
If you didn't know, now you know. No, there's a certain amount of life that's f***ing random, and it's very egocentric to pretend that it's not. I'm not pretending that's No, not. you're not. But some people do. But I, you know, some people do. Like, of course. Yeah. You know, that's why I said, I believe there is evil. COVID, where's it? He's like, checking in. Just great rant. I agree with you. I'm not saying that. He's like, oh, no, no, you're not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> he's just getting all passionate. He's like, I think I'm losing him on his own podcast. That's so good. <laughs> come from, you know, did it come from a lab? Did it come from a bat? Did it come from evil energy? Did it come from evil people? There's, there's a guideline which um, gives you just an incredibly good feeling. And I have to say that, I mean, the people that I've met who are Christians are not, you know, no one walks around saying, hey, I'm a Christian, you know, this is what we should do. No, um, they have their own ways. And I think I'm bringing it up with you because I feel like I, it's, it's honest with you. I want to tell you where I'm yeah. at in my life. I appreciate um, that. I appreciate that you can do that. Yeah, well, thank you. I can do that with you. No one else, I could do this with no one else. Um, mm. it, it has made my wow. life that much and happier. And mm. the people who I meet are uh, are just happy people. We don't sit around talking about God, <laughs> but we- That's we, the goal though, right? I don't think so. I mean, in life, no, 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 to be happy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's love, what I'm saying. Love, yeah. love is like, the, what, you're, the what you're saying is the goal. Like you're, you're saying like, I'm happy. We're around happy people. Yeah. That's, that's the goal, uh -huh. right? That's what everybody wants. So like whatever methods you get to get there, it's interesting that some people would rather not get there and rather be in a depressed yeah. state <laughs> yeah. as long as they're not duped <laughs> <laughs> but you've been duped by life like of course because your life sucks but, I mean, but, 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 but it's not like atheists but the idea, super depressed the idea is not that god fixes everything the idea is if you if you can believe in it and can put yourself in a mindset mm. i'm just looking at it a little abstract now yes. you put yourself in a mindset that things can happen and that, that miracles do happen that things do uh, impact your life and that you look at things in a different way you're not always completely f up about this is not happening for me or that's not happening you know you do you think it's like psychological software that you can run like oh, your belief in God, do you think that's like psychological <laughs> software that you could just run and they're like, ooh, look, everything's smoother? No, it's not. No, because it, everything isn't smoother, but you at least don't freak out when it isn't smooth. Right. I don't mean ah, it. Either. Pause mm. it. That's a, that's a gem. It's not that following God makes your life void of suffering. It's that yeah. following God helps you make sense of the suffering. Mm. Wow. So yeah. so so he, he, he nails it here. That's good. Derogatory way no, or no. negative way. I know. What I mean is like... Is that why it's effective? There's well, like a natural thing that you could run, and it's been honed over time. It only makes sense. Well, yes. That, well, here right? you go. I love this. I just sort of slide. What is the software? What is the code? It's the Bible. Mm. It is it's, it's the gospel, scripture. That is. If yeah! you want to look Come on, come on, Heat. Put it that way. It is the code that you run in your brain, and it does things for you. Yeah. So that's a way of looking at it. And that's a kind of a good way. Actually, I hadn't thought of that one. I like that. Yeah, like a, <laughs> like a psychological software. Pause it. Sure. I wonder if there's something to this. I know it sounds like complete googly gobbly wash, right? But I wonder if so, there's something to like, could you do a brain scan of someone before, like, like someone before they were a Christian and then like what proceeds after they start going to church mm. and worshiping and reading the Bible and like, because something's definitely happening with the neurons in your brain. I definitely think something would come back. I don't know if it'd be exclusive to following Jesus. I see. Let's Does that make sense? Brain like, I bet it would be like of it, Christians, like the same way how you get the same chemicals released in your brain when you work out that you do when you do drugs or you uh, watch porn or something. Uh -huh. I, I I bet it would be like a healthier equivalent mm -hmm. of those things. Mm -hmm. Because I definitely feel like something something happens. I just I don't know what. But but you know if you just want to run things in DOS, your life is going to be clunky. Do you know no, that why don't you get a nice user interface? <laughs> most most of your life most of your life runs on AS four hundred mainframes still. So you know airlines, uh, the government, everything right. runs on pre DOS. I mean yeah. it's still all all wrapped up in that. So there's more. I think there's more people that are questioning narratives today than there's ever been before because questioning narratives is something that's like publicly discussed mm -hmm. by millions. It's a different yeah. it's a different thing because of the one of the things about the freedom the internet gives you is like any person can just start a YouTube per page mm -hmm. and you just need an iPhone or whatever. Samsung, whatever you can just mm -hmm. do a camera. You are you have the potential to reach everybody, mm -hmm. and that weirdness allows people to start talking about all sorts of sh that never is going to make it to Fox News, never is going to make it to CNN, no. never, no. ever, ever. But those things will be seen by more people than are watching those things. Oh, without so, a doubt. So what is I'm curious if he's going to keep him on the gospel conversation or if he's going to let him drift. I think he's going to reel him back in. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. What do you guys think? Chat. What do y'all think? Is he going to let Joe do the Joe Rogan meander? Or is he going to reel him back into God? By the way, not to make this super spooky or that it, you know, the God needs Joe Rogan, because I don't, I don't believe that. But I will say that this is an answer to people's prayer. I think people understand the influence Rogan has, and I think people understand that he's open and that he's growing. And the fact that like there's an actual Christian kind of on the channel, new Christian, don't be pressing him he had the ceo from babylon be on right i i find it super interesting and i do believe that this is an uh, an answer to people's prayers i've, I've prayed for for joe before 
um, that he would just allow open, you know, to God, that God would send him different voices to give him perspective on these things. So, um, yeah, God doesn't need, but he wants. Yes, yes. And, and, and I would say the character of God, faith, that's a good point. I'd say the character of God is he wants all of us to be saved, right? Again, what presuppositions do we have about the world? How, what is the starting point? Like my, my, one of my two biggest presuppositions about the world is that Jesus is the God over this world and that God wants everyone to come to faith and be saved. Those are one of my two biggest presuppositions. And both of those are scriptural. So if my presuppositions are that, then I'm, I kind of filter everything through that, right? So when I'm watching a Joe Rogan, I'm not seeing some guy that uses foul language and, you know, is, is kind of a, a crass comedian. I'm watching a guy that uh, God wants to save. Like, that's, 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 how, that's how I see him. I see him as someone that God wants to redeem and someone that wants to be in relationship. God wants him to be in relationship with him. So, um, and because God is over this world, even though the enemy has some some form of dominion, I don't know how it all works, but God is over this world that God can do whatever he wants to a, to a certain degree. God is good, right? God is, God is good. God is all-knowing. God is all-powerful, all-present, loving, and he wants everybody to be saved. I mean, those are some good presuppositions to, mm-hmm. to, to, have a, to, ha- to frame your worldview on. Mm-hmm. I feel like God's always moving. I feel like God's not finished. I feel like you never know who can come to faith. And oftentimes the people that seem the farthest from God mm. oftentimes end up being the people that, you know, really become advocates because they kind of, they, they get, they have a grasp of what it's like to be angry at God and be hostile to God. And then they switch teams and then they, so we're like, who knows, you know? Hey, this clip is from our daily after party stream. If you enjoyed it, consider signing up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month. Will you get access to the replays of our daily after party streams, as well as the uncut extended versions of our podcast, discord access that's private and a discount code for our merch store only five dollars a month and ultimately it's the best way to help us contextualize the gospel of jesus using media podcasting and of course youtube the link for that is in the description or in the pinned comment i'll see you over there all right peace